So Tony Liu sent me some video requests. The channel, Green Slug, was mentioned, but I probably won't get to the specific video mentioned here since that video is a little long. But what I will do is choose another video that he made called Evolution vs Gravity. Now these past few videos I've been doing for fun. I swear I'll return to tackling bigger and more serious videos soon. I just wanted to try out this more frequent upload schedule. Anyway, without further ado, let's roll the clip. I wanted to make a video addressing a common argument um, I hear for evolution that sounds interesting at first, but it becomes pretty absurd when you look at it logically. Okay, so this guy talks pretty slowly. Not that I have a problem with people who talk slowly, since I actually talk pretty slowly if I don't have a script. But just mentioning it to let you know that I'll be cutting out a lot of the silences. So a lot of times I hear people talk about evolution and say, well, you deny evolution? Uh, that's like denying gravity. Well, from my understanding, the reason people say that is to let you know how concrete evolution is. In fact, one of the times I hear people say that is in response to creationists claiming that evolution is quote unquote just a theory, in which the response is, gravity is also theory, I don't see you jumping off buildings. Now to be honest, I actually have a problem with that argument. You can have theories of gravity, but gravity itself isn't exactly a scientific theory. I guess you can kind of think of it like evolution. Evolution itself is not the theory. Evolution is a phenomenon that is guaranteed to be true. The theories of evolution describe the mechanisms in which evolution occur. Sort of the same with gravity. One of the biggest problems I have with creationists is their ability to differentiate between evolution and the theory of evolution. And if you use the gravity is also a theory argument, then you're also doing the same thing as them, not being able to differentiate between the theories of gravity and gravity itself. And if you use the gravity is also a theory argument, then you're also doing the same thing as them, not being able to differentiate the theories of gravity from gravity itself. I would like to go more into detail on this, but that's a topic for another video. Let's take a pen and put it in front of us. You know, hold the pen out like this, and you know, maybe hold it like this, you know, whichever preference you have, and let go. Oh wow, look at that. You can repeat this experiment over and over again until the end of the world. Then I want you to take uh, some of the bacteria on there, and I want you to watch those bacteria evolve into sentient life over the course of billions of years. Well, it doesn't work like that. It's difficult to see any of the interesting events of evolution because we don't have millions or billions of years to spend. But when you say evolution, what exactly are you referring to? Because evolution only says that life changes over time. The phenomenon of evolution doesn't say that bacteria necessarily have to evolve into multicellular organisms. So if you mean evolution in that sense, then yes, we can demonstrate it. By simply taking some bacteria, feeding it some antibiotics, and seeing how natural selection does its work to produce resistant bacteria. That is evolution. But you're talking about our map of the evolutionary tree. Tree, right? Yes, it's true we can't directly observe the events, but we don't have to to know what happened. A detective doesn't need to actually witness the crime scene in order to deduce the action of crime. We have fossil evidence, DNA evidence, proteins, viruses. Need I go on? Being ignorant about all the evidence doesn't make it go away. Now, a lot of you will look at this and say, oh, well, obviously you don't understand evolution. You know, evolution is something that happens over a long period of time. You can't just observe it happening like that. This is exactly my point. Evolution claims that all life on Earth arose from a single-celled prokaryote, and this supposedly happened through random mutations and natural selection, through purely naturalistic processes. This is the claim made by the general theory of evolution. Well, no, the theory of evolution is Darwin's theory, aka natural selection. That describes a process, not an event. Alright, I'll stop nitpicking on the terminology and definitions, since your incorrect usage of them doesn't seem like it's going to stop. A lot of times textbooks will say, well, or you'll hear people say, uh, well, evolution just means change over time. Yep, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, that's not really true. Um, evolution means a lot more than that. Um, if we're talking about you know, Darwin's theory of evolution, or if we're talking about um, evolutionary theory or general evolutionary theory, then the fact that species change is only one tiny part of that. Now, the problem is that the fact that species change is also part of the creation model. So whether you're a creationist, evolutionist, or intelligent design advocate, everybody agrees that species change. In fact, it was a creationist that first came up with the idea of natural selection. See, this is the reason I hammer so hard on terminology. Yes, some creationists also believe that organisms have changed over time, perhaps only over 6,000 years. But that's the thing. By strict definition, you guys also acknowledge evolution as true. The only difference is that you deny the large-scale tree of evolution that scientists have drawn out, which is a conclusion we drew from the phenomenon of evolution. The reason we have such a confusion like this is because you create Creationists don't understand science and therefore keep getting definitions and terminology wrong. That's pretty annoying, you know? Even in Darwin's time, 
the fact that species change wasn't controversial. Everybody knew that. Um, it was known for centuries. Um, Darwin noted that even in the Bible you had selective breeding for particular traits. So change over time in and of itself wasn't anything new. What made Darwin's ideas uh, quite radical was the idea that the fact that species change and could be extrapolated to say that all life on Earth was ultimately related um, through the universal tree of life. You know, it's not often that creationists get that right, so I'll give you a point for that. But only one point. Let's not get too hasty now. My point here is that we can observe gravity. We can observe the effects of gravity. I can observe a pen dropping. But the idea that single-celled organisms developed into everything, including humans, that can't be observed. Sure, I'll give you that. You weren't around to see single-celled organisms evolve into humans, but so what? Have you not seen the mountains upon mountains of evidence? One of my favorite but simple ones is endogenous retroviruses. These are viruses that inject DNA into the host genome. If this occurs in a sperm or egg cell, then the gene is passed to the offspring. In humans and chimps, we share at least seven locations where endogenous retroviral genes are found. That means that these viruses infected the ancestor of humans and chimps before speciation occurred, causing ERVs to be located in the exact same location for both after speciation. This observation would not be possible if humans and chimps did not share a common ancestor at one point, because even if ERVs infected both, it is very, very unlikely, basically impossible, that they would be incorporated into the genome at the exact same place, for seven different ERVs. I have yet to see a plausible explanation from creationists on this one. My high school biology teacher who had a master's in biology uh, one day told me that I knew evolution more than she did. And you, know, you guys might laugh at her, but she knew her stuff. You know, I've, I've studied this uh, quite in depth. My evolutionary biology professors, all three of them actually, complimented me as well when I took evolutionary biology. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite enough. So basically the bottom line with this is that no matter how strong of an inference you think the grand overarching claims of evolution are, no matter how strongly supported you believe that is as an inference, it's not on the same level as something that can be directly observed, like gravity. Both concepts do indeed have very different types of evidence, and personally I don't enjoy it when people claim that evolution is just like gravity. It most certainly isn't, but just because the types of evidence they have are different doesn't make one stronger than the other. Anyway, for the rest of the video, he continues on to say how the process of proving gravity isn't the same as that of evolution. It's basically just repeating the same thing, so I'm gonna end it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.